What up, VC? Kieran here. Gonna do round two of jazz CDs I'd like on vinyl. First off, I'd like to say cheers. Drinking an incredible wine this evening. Shout out to Fred, Big Star 1000. Tonight is a, it's a mix. It's not just a Syrah. It's a Manastral and a Syrah, which is Shiraz in Australia, blend from Spain. And this was actually a uh, one of the liquor commissions here, special uh, releases of uh, Robert Parker's 90 plus rated wines. Not that that means anything, but for those of you in the wine world uh, who are into wine, anyway, he thinks it's good. He supposedly knows something, but I bought it and it's the second bottle I've had actually, and it's incredible. So if you like wine, Barra Honda from uh, Barrica 2011. Cheers. So these uh, CDs, albums I'm going to show mean a lot to me. They're some of the albums that got me into jazz, kind of what I listened to over and over again when I first got into jazz years ago, kind of what I consider to be some of the essential albums. So most of you will probably know them. And once again, they're all on Blue Note Records. So. I'm not going to talk too much about them. I'll go through them quickly, the titles, the artists on them. They all, all mean a lot to me, specifically the first few. So first one is John Coltrane, Blue Train. That picture says it all. So you guys are no stranger to this, but if you're new to jazz and you're watching this, this is definitely one of the first albums I recommend picking up, either in the top five or top ten jazz, jazz albums for me that I recommend picking up. And uh, incredibly enough, it has not only John Coltrane, but one of my other favorite artists, Lee Morgan, on trumpet. So two out of my uh, Fred um, all-star team, per se, would be Lee Morgan, definitely, and John Coltrane. I would definitely have those two. And then you have Curtis Fuller on trombone, Kenny Drew on piano, Paul Chambers on bass, and Philly Joe Jones on drums. So that is John Coltrane, Blue Train. Next one I've shown before because I do have it on vinyl. A second press, I believe, um, on Blue Note, just after the just just after the original, I think still before 1960, and this one is Cannonball Adderley. I also have a reissue of this, I have two copies of this. So now I have, I have three counting the CD. And this is also an essential, essential jazz album. So this is basically Miles Davis's group here. And you have Art Blakey on here, uh, who's one of my favorites. Sam Jones, Hank Jones, Miles Davis, Cannonball Adderley. This is just beautiful, beautiful jazz music that Everyone can enjoy not only people who are into jazz, specifically Autumn Leaves, just a thing of beauty on uh, Blue Note Records. And this is one of the simpler covers on Blue Note, but still impactful. This is a one of for Cannonball Adderley on Blue Note, and this one is from 58, as well as John Coltrane, um, Blue Train is on 50, from 57, so some earlier jazz for y'all. Next one is one that is kind of formed my jazz taste in a sense. It's one that I listen to over and over and is what developed my love for Lee Morgan. And it is Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers moaning. And this is just something you need to hear, specifically the title track, Moaning. Look at that. Just so so powerful that photography and this has Lee Morgan on trumpet again Benny Golson on tenor sax Bobby Timmons on piano who actually wrote the track moaning that I absolutely love and uh, Jimmy Merritt on bass and Art Blakey on drums and this whole thing is just epic 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 and around the time that I was starting into jazz and buying these CDs these uh, DVD, this DVD collection called Jazz Icons started coming out and I picked this, I picked a bunch of them up but this is by far the best 
and it's Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers live in, live in 58. So this is a concert in Belgium exactly one month after this was recorded. And they do some different songs, but they do do the title track, Moaning. And just to see them do it live and Lee Morgan, I just, I can't say enough about this. To me, I would watch this when I was first getting into jazz and it would just take me to another place, man. They do Just By Myself, Moaning, I Remember Clifford, It's You or No One, Whisper Not, which is an awesome song, A Night in Tunisia, classic, and uh, New York theme. But just to see them, it's just black and white, they're dressed in their suits on stage in Belgium, doing their thing, and just the soul and emotion that goes into that track, Moaning, is something else. These are albums I listen to over and over again. Often while drinking wine, probably cooking some food up or something. Continuing on the essential albums for me and the ones that really form my jazz, uh, my jazz listening in my early years of jazz is Horace Silver, Song for My Father. And this is another album. Love the cover, love the music. And you have two different uh, groups on here, two different uh, lineups. Carmel Jones, who I don't know on trumpet. Joe Henderson, my man, on tenor sax. Horace Silver, Teddy Smith, and Roger Humphreys on drums. And then you also have Lou Mitchell on trumpet. Soulful as ever, always. Junior Cook, Horace Silver, Gene Taylor, and Roy Brooks. And just the opening song, man. Song for my father. Need to hear this. If you don't know this album, check this out ASAP. Next essential album for me, one of my favorites um, of the period. Man, I just always forget to tell the year. I mean, you know they're all on Blue Note, but this one's from 63. Okay, and uh, Art Blakey, I believe, is 58. 58, 63. And next one, Donald Bird, Slow Drag. She's pretty hot. Yeah, I think so. Um, this one is... 67 so this is a later one a later bird album um in terms of the these blue notes but i'm not late compared to his electric period which we've been discussing recently but you have sunny red cedar walton walter booker and billy higgins on drums and vocal love the music on here slow drag title track killer killer stuff if you don't know this check it out well worth it next one Taylor album, Wayne Shorter, Speak No Evil. Look at that. Ooh, that is some amazing stuff. And this, you have, this is an all-star lineup. This is definitely an all-star lineup. Not my top five, but you have Freddie Hubbard on trumpet. You have Wayne Shorter on tenor sax. Herbie Hancock on piano. Ron Carter on bass, and none other than Elvin Jones on drums. They weren't messing around here. So, Witch Hunt, a song like Witch Hunt, you just know. Fee Fi Fo Fum, Dance Cadaverous, Speak No Evil, Infant Eyes, and Wildflower. If you don't know it, get on it right now. Speak No Evil. Change of pace, um, big time from Speak No Evil. Wow, I'm bad at years 64 another one that i listen to and it's a great great late night smooth um not smooth jazz but just smooth album to put on late in the evening just imagine like kind of like a smoky dark new york club um the and the the, the cover just it just describes it perfectly if i could get it out of here which i can't at the moment Grant Green, Idle Moments. Just like a blue, dark guitar. And this is also just one, one of the albums I listen to over and over again. This, in terms of guitar albums, jazz guitar, this, and the one I showed in my last video, Midnight Blue, Kenny Burrell. Love it. So this is from 63. And you have Joe Anderson. Again, killing it. Bobby Hutcherson, and you obviously have Grant Green on guitar, Duke Pearson on piano, Bob Crenshaw on bass, and Al Harewood on drums. So, 
Well, I mean, there's nothing else to say. Just check it out if you don't know it. This one I actually have a reissue of, I believe, on vinyl. And I have lots of his albums on CD. But this is the one that always kind of sticks out. Hank Mobley, Dippin'. So just kind of one of the classics of the period on Blue Note for Hank Mobley. And this one's from 65, so later one. Uh, Lee Morgan on trumpet again, of course. Uh, Harold Mauburn Jr. on piano. Larry Ridley, Billy Higgins on drums. Love that. Um, have a bunch of his albums. Also have a bunch of Dexter Gordon's albums. Probably five or six of them. Go. This one is from 62. And... Uh, has Sonny Clark on pia piano, but Butch Warren on bass and Billy Higgins on drums. Excellent, excellent album. Listened to it many, many times. This is a later one. Uh, 67, Jackie McLean, New and Old Gospel. And this is totally different than the rest of the album I've been showing in terms of style. Definitely 67, but moving towards what we new as post-bop and jazz in the 70s. Of course, you have Ornette Coleman on trumpet and Lamont Johnson piano, who I don't know, Scotty Holt and Billy Higgins again on drums. This, uh, like, just when you start getting into the first track, 21 minutes, so it's lifeline and it's broken down into A, B, C, and D. So they're getting into some shit here. New and old gospel, Jackie McLean. And to flip it on, you can take it way back for the last two from 56. Good luck getting an original of this on vinyl. Introducing Johnny Griffin. This is just, it's, I mean, not, might not be everyone's bag, but it's a good listen and it's just classic jazz. Beautiful cover, beautiful music. I mean, all of the songs really. Lover Man, come on. Um, Johnny Griffin, Winton Kelly, Curly Russell, Max Roach. Can't can't go wrong with that. And last but not least, amazing, the amazing, Bud Powell. So another one I'd love to have on vinyl. All of these I would love to have on vinyl, but I'm very happy that I know the music and I can listen to it wherever and whenever I want because I have it on CD as well as digitally. And this one you have uh, Fats Navarro on trumpet, Sonny Rollins on tenor sax, Bud Powell, Tommy Potter, and Roy Haynes on drums. That's 1 to 11. And then you also have uh, Curly Russell on bass and Max Roach. You have a tr uh, eight trio tracks on here as well. So those are all pretty essential albums. Not THE essential jazz albums, but all of them I would consider essential. I mean, I wouldn't narrow it down to those 10, obviously, but if you're into jazz or you're interested in getting into jazz, I definitely suggest you check those out. And if you're just getting into jazz, I definitely suggest the first few that I showed, the first five, the Art Blakey, the Cannonball Adderley, the Blue Train, uh, Speak No Evil by uh, Wayne Shorter. I mean, those you just gotta check out. And if you know the albums, Maybe you haven't listened to them in a while. Check them out. Revisit them. So, cheers to you guys. Everyone that's making videos, keep it up. I love watching it. Just an inspiration. And for those of you that are watching and commenting, thank you. I love the interaction. And I hope all is well. Take care. Peace.